Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Riders Meeting. I'm your host, David Pingree, joined by Bruce Murata, and we've brought Jason Lawrence back. Had a lot of requests uh, to bring him back on, and, and we agreed, man. J-Law, uh, we had so much fun with you on Sight Lap. You had some super good insight. I didn't, I guess I didn't realize you were such a student of it, but man, you, you had some really good points. So I'm stoked to have you break this down. And um, a lot of the stuff you guys talked about really happened too. I mean, uh, you said, Hey, Coop is the guy he's on fire. Watch out. And damn it. If we aren't at a tie race right now in this championship fight. So uh, we're going to get into all of it. I'm stoked to have you back. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors real quick. First rock and turf. Uh, if you guys need any artificial grass, any hardscape work, these guys are amazing. Uh, they also make some really cool mats, any size. You can put your logos on it out of that artificial grass. It's great for changing like in the back of a truck or in a trailer or outside your RV or whatever you've got. So check those guys out at Rock and Turf on Instagram. Maxis.com. If you have mountain bike tire needs, truck tires, Maxis has you covered. Go to Maxis.com and Speedstrap.com. These guys make killer tie downs and toe straps. Whether you need to pull a big truck out of the mud or tow your buddy who blew his bike up, uh, they got you dialed in. Speedstrap.com. Check them out. Um, all right, man. So Foxborough here really kind of made things interesting in the, in the premier class, especially. Uh, let's start with the 250 class, though. And I'm going to say I, I did call this. I thought Deegan was going to come out firing at these last rounds. I think that the injury he had was worse than what they were letting on. And with the time off, I think he's gotten himself back to a better place. He rode solid, uh, never really looked squirrely, got the start. He did everything right. Um, and Vial, I was really rooting for, for Vial to uh, kind of get up there and tighten those points back up because really that's all I want to see. Uh, what did you guys make of this, this main event here in the 250 class? It was a little sleepy, to be honest, as far as the racing goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, but I would say Vial, that was pretty pretty steady for Vial. As far as Deegan goes, that was like, he just put himself right back in the championship for real. I mean, McAdoo shows speed. I was surprised how, how fast McAdoo seemed, but it seemed like in the beginning of the race, he almost didn't even want to get up there and race with Hayden. And it looked like maybe he was waiting for a mistake that never came. And I think he might be playing the championship game and maybe let Deegan back in a little bit right there when he comes away with the win, not just the confidence, but I mean, I know from my experience, I mean, I had like races where I think I could have got first where I got second in 08 and Rhino had told me like, dude, you don't, that wasn't good. You know, you should have been out there. You need the three points. Things can come back to bite you, but I'm not sure about if that's what McAdoo was thinking or if Deegan just found another level, but in the press conference, Deegan kind of, if he blames his lull and results on anything, it's, he said the tracks, he's like, I loved having the skimmers, the whoops, this felt like a real track recently, the tracks haven't suited me. So maybe it's just that. And I don't even know if it's so much to do with an injury, but if so, he doesn't make a big deal about it. So I love that. Yeah, that's good to hear. What, what do you think, Bruce? What was your take? Well, I mean, as soon as he got that whole shot, I'm like, it's, it's over. And I think, uh, you know, just based off like how the track was like kind of what he was actually talking about in the press where I just feel like it suited him really well, super technical. Um, you know, some of those rhythm sections were super fast. Um, and, and I was stoked to kind of see him rebound from, uh, that heat race when, uh, first off good ride by chance Hymas and that winning that, his first heat race. Um, but when Hayden caught him, he stalled kind of trying to jump inside right there. Um, I, th I can't remember what he finished there, but I know it kind of sent him back a little bit, but sometimes that can kind of set the tone for the night. Uh, but obviously that didn't affect him. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, man, I think he's, um, I think you're going to see more of this moving forward. And these other guys, they, they better, they better not let him get too comfortable on these wins because I mean, I mean, obviously he could do it, you know? So. Well, um, I think next weekend is going to be massive. Well, uh, because with this East West shootout, man, the points can swing big. Right. And uh, if, if he gets some of those West coast guys to jump in and, and Hayden's certainly capable of winning that race. And if he can get, two three guys from the west to fill that podium out all yep. of a sudden we're talking about 
you know, a completely different scenario because I really was kind of like, ah, he's pretty far out in a normal scenario where you just have East Coast rounds. Yeah, I would that's say, where ah. the three points can really come back to bite, like McAdoo right here that he maybe could have got, I felt like. But even to say, like, about what Bruce says about how Hayden had that mistake in the heat race, I kind of love that because it's like he's still finding his limit, you know, and, like, he's still pushing that, and it's almost like he's advised well enough to know don't ride over your head in the heat race, but he's still out there in the heat race, like, going hard enough that, yeah, he lost it and he broke traction and crashed, but he didn't do that again in the in the main event. You know, like, I watched the whole main event twice, as far as what he's shown on the TV, he doesn't make one mistake except in the rhythm section. And it was only because there was a lapper like kind of blocking the main line where he wanted to get off that tabletop. Other than that, dude, he was like, looked like maybe riding like 70, 80%. And he yeah, says it in a press conference. It's pretty crazy. He so looks great. I'll, I'll right give there. you my little take on that uh, just from my personal experience, right? Um, in 2000, when I was leading that championship, I'm going way back. I'm super old. Sorry, guys. But um, there was a race in Houston where I came from like a fifth, sixth place start, got into second, and Shea Bentley was leading. And I, in my head, I'm going, Shea had a bad first round. He's way back in points. I don't need to worry about him. Just be smart. Take a second. You know, because he had maybe a three-second gap. But I was fast enough to close it. I just was like, no, I'm going to play it safe. Those three points came back to haunt me. I lost that title by two after I had a wow. mechanical. Dude, that so, same thing with me. That's my case was in 08. Fortunately, I'm not even trying to rub it in. I ended up winning mine. But in my second to last race was Houston. And Austin Stroop was in front of me. And I was riding tight, but I was ahead of Dungy. So I'm like, this is plenty good. And I settled for second. Maybe I could have won. And I would like celebrated like it was a victory. Probably like how you felt in your case. And Rhino was like, no, dude, not a victory. You needed every point. So had I lost that close title battle, it would have been the same thing. And I think McAdoo's lining himself up for that could be the case, could not be, but those are big points. It's just hard to tell how. Chase, Chase with there's two races that Chase had lost to Cooper where he might have been able to beat him at Seattle and even last night. He might have mm -hmm. been able to beat him both of those. And if Chase gets himself back into this title, those points might have really mattered where he was going to wish he maybe went a little more for the in the moment well, and tried to win the race. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's six points. Take six yeah. points off of his deficit right now. He's in, he's yeah, less than fifth. 10 away from those guys, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. He's 15 right now down. So, yeah. Well, that's six points, but it's a that's a 12-point swing in the terms of with Cooper. You know, yeah, yeah. because then it's a six point swing. So he'd be like Cooper would be six points out of the championship. He'd be six closer. Yeah. Really, dude, the title's still far from over. Mm -hmm. That those are really good points, man. And I only only Cameron and Hayden know how hard they were pushing. Like maybe that's all Hayden had or or all Cameron had, but it didn't look like he was pushing crazy hard, right? And and all year, I think one of the things he's worked on is just being consistent which is great. You have to be consistent, but like, I think he said you're he right. Had in the press conference. He, he said the, he said the beginning laps, Hayden's laps were too fast for him. And once he started to get into his rhythm that he, he got arm pump and he's barely ever suffers with arm pump. And he, he was kind of frustrated with it, but he couldn't ride his whole speed. He pretty much like said, nah, he didn't have the speed for, Deegan and Deegan sits right next to him and just eats it up like they're like do you think there was a time when you know you you could have made the pass and Deegan's like sitting there like say something like dude I love him <laughs> yeah. Matt, dude, I don't know man I think it might be the pressure and I think he might not know it's the pressure because he's saying like yeah sometimes I get pumped up and I don't know why you got to deal with it well bud maybe it's when you know it's crunch time and you're leading the championship with a couple races to go who knows you had a question about Cameron, um, about whether or not that the championship pressure for Mitch, they've gone so long without a title. And right now you've got Levi leading the West and Cameron leading the East. And does that bring a bunch of extra pressure? Is he feeling that? Um, Bruce, what do you think of that question? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, for sure. It's going to bring pressure on him. I mean, like you said, I'm that, that team's known for always, you know, 
winning titles and it's been so long since Mitch has had, I mean, I feel like he's kind of gotten off like that success train of just winning championships and races. And um, yeah, I feel with, you know, him having the red plate, um, I don't care who you are. Anytime you're going to be a points leader, you're going to have pressure for sure. Um, So yeah, I think it kind of is putting some pressure on him. And um, I think Hayden, I feel like Hayden's in a really good spot right now. You know, he's um, because, I mean, I feel with, I mean, he's probably got one of the best, one one of the best mentors is his dad. He's probably telling him those things too. Like, dude, look, this kid's, you can crack this kid. Like he's, he's got pressure on him right now. Um, You know, just keep doing what you're doing. And um, yeah. And I'm, and I want to bring up something too about like this next weekend coming up with the East West showdown um because i feel like this can get really interesting because as you two know like you get used to racing your competition like every weekend <laughs> like you know kind of how they ride and so it always gets interesting when you get a whole new group of guys you know when you when you're going to get the west coast guys here so um man i'm just I mean, I, I wanted to actually ask you about that, Jason. Like, do you think that could do anything? Like having like a whole different West Coast come in here? Is it going to, you know? It definitely can. I mean, you see like in this race with the 250 class, I'm not sure how they all started, but like immediately the top four guys were top four, you know, yeah. like the top four championship guys, Vial, Brown, they went straight to the top. And yeah, it's like they're certified themselves. And like, that's something that, you just think you belong and that's how it's going to be, you know, but you go, now you're going to put four other guys who also think that same thing in their class. So it's going to make it more competitive in that sense. And yeah, you don't really know how, uh, how the other guys ride, you know, and then there's, I mean, there's just so many variables. I like that, but I don't know if I really, I like this a lot more than I like triple crowns. I'm not a fan of the triple crowns, but I think something to note is like Casey Cochran raced his first race. Oh he my gosh. Fourth yeah. Place, fourth yeah. place. And I think what was he the only husky in the main event? That's what I saw. I'm pretty sure he's the only husky on the track. Yeah. yeah I, I like that kid, dude. He is uh you know, he's gonna take a little while to just get up to speed and get used to this, but he's got a funny personality. Like I really like that oh, dude. Yeah. I'm I'm stoked for him to join the series. So that was cool. Yeah. I do want to ask this. I want to get back to the championship thing quick, but um Hymas, Romano, Hamaker, um, just bad nights, man. Kind of a bad season. I mean, Hymas hasn't been in the top ten. I don't, I don't think yet. In a yeah, but that that's what's so weird about Chance Hymas, and I know we've spoke about this kind of in the beginning of the season with I think when we had Reed on, where it's like the kid shows so much speed, and you remember we talked about how he potentially had like a knee injury, mm-hmm. and maybe that's what's kind of holding him back. But it's like it's weird because in that heat race. I mean, he's beating guys like McAdoo, Deegan, all of them. Like, so he obviously can, I mean, I get it. Like heat races are obviously going to be different than your, the main event, but I mean, he shows the speed, but then when it comes main event time, he just, I don't know. He just can't put it together. It's weird. I think he, he won that heat race. He had a solid ride in that heat race, right? But he had a good start. And what you saw in that heat race was Hayden Deegan, well, you saw Hayden Deegan was mature. Like you saw maturity in the sense of how he handled Seth Hamaker when he passed him, because mm-hmm. like he, it was obvious that he wasn't wanting to rattle him and that he wanted to make it like known, like, Hey, we're putting that in the past. Whereas I think Hayden, maybe even just a few weeks ago, might've just went in there and blasted him again. But I think he's got like his dad or somebody had told him, you know, like that's not how we're going to handle it seemed like awesome right there but that held him up in the sense of that race i let hymas kind of get going and he was just in his groove but before deegan crashed dude when he got open track he was blitzing and like he was gonna yeah. be coming up on just not sure that was gonna be a win you know like had hayden not had that mistake so not really a great night for hymas so overall i guess when the main doesn't go as planned but man he was jazzed on the podium so he took some confidence from it so should see if he does better i bet he will yeah, yeah. romano's struggling just kind of i think getting used to it um even though he's been around for now a season or so 
this is kind of his rookie re- year really and he's had little little bright spots but um I keep waiting for him to have a good breakout ride and then hammaker and this guy's how he's got the speed to win on any given night it seems like but he just crashes his brains out yeah. You see him get stuck in mud? How about that? Oh, well, Towers, too. What about Gavin Towers, dude? That, yeah. that was comedy. Gavin Towers, yeah. he pulled it together for the Futures main event, though, huh? I think he got second. Got second. Yeah. Because they're they're like making fun of him on the Moto Bacon like memes and stuff for crashing every time. So it's good he made a solid one. That's cool. But Drew Adams, bud. He looks like he's cherry picking or he's sandbagging, I should say, in that class now. <laughs> he looks see how much. That kid's massive. Like, he looks yeah. like he's, he's six foot. He looks like but he's is, like a top five guy. Yeah. <laughs> Drop him on the next gate, dude, and he's probably a championship. Mitch should early move him up to try to help with the title. Woo! He could do it. Do, do you know, Jason, when he is going to – does anyone know when he is going to race? I don't know. Like, pro? I'm Definitely not sure. I, was... year, I think he's won three out of the four Futures. I don't know what happened yeah. to him at the first one, but dude, he's like his progression has been stupid just throughout yeah. this year. It's insane. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, like, I really like, now he's like a pleasure to watch. At first, he was a little sketchy. The first guy, I really like Cole Davies. He's had a couple of bad starts yeah. at the last two, but he won the opener. I love the way that kid rides, dude. He's yeah. so smooth well, and calm all the time. Yeah, well, he's smooth and calm. Um, but how about the Fouser guy? They're going oh. for the podium. Yeah, he oh, hit him good. Fouser, he put it <laughs> the podium. He put it in there on him. That was crazy. There was guys going for it. Oh, Kalana Humphreys did good. Yeah, six. Yeah, for, up there. For yeah that was good. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, all right. Well, sure. let's run through these. So it was Deegan McAdoo VL, uh, Brown. Good ride for Pierce again. Man, he just seems like he he's just that fourth place guy all year. I really wish he'd get up and get into that podium mix. Anstey, Shock, Benick, Swole, Welton, Miller. Um, uh, I'm excited to see Benick. I think that kid's got a lot under the hood. It's just it maybe going to take a little time, but I really like his technique, his style, kind of just everything I see out of that kid. I, I think he's got a future, like a strong future. Yeah. Um, what did you see out of VL? Uh, I was, man, I just kept hoping he was going to make a charge, man, and it just didn't come. There wasn't really much crazy about Vial this race, for real. I mean, not to say I was let down, but, like, I think his face in the press conference, like, says it. Like, he just – it was, like, flat, I would say. I don't know. I mean, he put himself in a good position off the start, but the way the whoops were with the skimmers, it just don't do it for him, you know? Like, yeah. he, he's not good in it, and it doesn't really favor him, which is weird, too, because the track changed significantly from practice until the – maybe it was the second practice, but – Early, they were able to go – there was five singles and then the whoops. And they were able to go double, double, jump in over the starter and the first whoop, and quad, quad. Even the 250F guys were doing it. It was cool. But it was faster to go outside, triple, double, like the race line developed, and then skim the whoops. But they, they could also double over the starter and jump the whoops. Then when they came back out, they dozered the whoops and favored the – you never even saw anybody quad anymore except for Deegan one or two times in the 250 main. I don't know if that was like maybe because people are griping like, oh, now they're making the whoops jumper. So they kind of gave you what you wanted. But I think it kind of – Deegan loved it. He said he preferred it. But I I don't know. I think it took away from one of the coolest sections. Like I love that when they integrate a rhythm with the whoops. You yeah. can like hop into the double or something. That was a cool section. The track was good, though, I thought. Yeah, I thought the track was good, too. Um, all right, so where's the points at, Bruce? You got them written down? Yeah. They're yeah, tied, so, buddy. Yeah. Let's 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 hear <laughs> so, – no, Deegan's – or McAdoo's got a – Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so go, yeah. yeah. So for the 250 East points, Cameron McAdoo's uh, leading at 120. Second's Tom Vial with four points down. Third is Hayden Deegan with 13 points down. Fourth, Pierce Brown at 15 points down. Fifth is Cody Shock with 25 points down. Sixth is De- uh, Daxon Benick, 34 points down. Seventh, Max Anstey, 41 points down. Eighth, Seth Hammaker, 48 points down. Ninth is Jalik Swole, 48 points down. And then tenth is Chance Hymas with 50 points down. Okay, so uh, I'll just ask this, like, 
how how far of a long shot is Hayden Deegan for this title? I think we'll get a lot of our answer next week because if, yeah. if there isn't a big mix up after Nashville, That's, then you know it's gonna it's gonna be yeah. If if it's like you said, we're gonna we're gonna have a better you know. Let's see how Nashville goes. So. I think it was an opportunity missed for McAdoo to put the nail in the coffin with Deegan, and he is not out of it, dude. When you were reading those yeah. results, I was say that last name you said, Chance Hymas, 50 points yep. down. Chance ain't got a chance, but you don't draw the line <laughs> until after Pierce Brown. You know what I mean? Pierce Brown, 15 points, bud. You're still in this. If you're he coming is. to a race that pays you 25 points to win and you're thinking you're not still in it, then you shouldn't be there. All those guys think they're in it for yeah. real. And they really are. Yep. It's a good point. It's a great point. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's move on to our rock and turf 450 final. Um, man, you guys called it. Webb has got the momentum and damn it. He just delivered like whole shot and, <laughs> and really withstood the pressure. Now here was for me, the, the kind of, I have two points of the night, right? We we try to pick the maxis moment of the night. And I had two things that happened in this main event that I think really changed the outcome. One was Jet getting pushed and stood up in that first turn into Malcolm because he came into the turn not too bad. He would have been fifth, you know, in, in there. And when he got stood up, it screwed him up and he was he was deep, like outside the top 10. That was one thing that screwed his race up. And then the next thing that I was I was yelling at my TV. It may be part of it's because I'm not a Ken Roxon fan, but Chase just would not go after him. Like, dude, finish the pass. Even that one time, I think it was before the, before the finish, he could have just <laughs> ended it, right? He had the speed to go yeah. catch Webb, and he was being too damn soft on Ken Roxon. Uh, and I know those guys ride together. So maybe they're buddies. And this is why you don't be friends with, with uh, people you race against. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, but I hate that friend stuff on the track. And then they further it in the press conference. I'm I'm by no means talking crap right here, but what I took from the press conference was Kenny said, Oh, once I let Chase by, I decided I'm not gonna let them go and just have their own battle. That would be lame. Instead, I stuck with them. That's Ken Roxon saying, like, yeah. He could do whatever he wants to on the track. He could have held Chase behind him because Chase was never going to pass him. It wasn't until he realized it was him that he let him ride right around the outside somewhere where no one would ever pass you around the outside. I thought that was weird, the, the little friend thing. But I think Kenny in this race, and I even think Chase a little bit, dude, they get up on Cooper. They don't even want to – they don't want to put themselves in the situation where it's going to be a couple minutes to go and Cooper Webb's behind you. So yeah. they, they're in their head like, dude, I'm faster. And if you think you're faster, they're thinking I'm going to sit on him and I'm going to pass him in the last couple minutes. Then shit happens in the race and those opportunities dwindle. Or when you get up to Cooper Webb, he starts riding with eyes in the back of his head and you can't pass him. And I think that's what Kenny was doing. He was like sitting in a queue, like in a line, just waiting for his opportunity with Chase. He realized Chase wants to get by with that crazy one leg panic rep before the finish. <laughs> so he let him by the very next turn. And then Cooper just, he ain't having it, you know, like I think those guys kind of waste a little too much time. And yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is a race that Chase may look back on the title as I needed that. He may not, but I mean, Chase is definitely coming alive. And what I heard Chase say was last year after the break, he got second in the first race and then he won four out of the next six. So he's not out of it in his mind is what he said. And he also had like the moment now Cooper Webb had his jacket off. That's why that's why Jet Lawrence messed up in the first turn, dude. He didn't yeah. like that. He was intimidated because Coop had the jacket off. I don't know hey. if that line, if that joke was crossed the line or what, but Coop's on a roll. That in the, did you hear that? In, did you hear that? Yeah, in the man. <laughs> yeah, Coop's, Coop's, Coop's had some real, that. yeah, Coop's had some real edgy <laughs> stuff this year. Uh, well, hey, we all supported his, his um, hard as the morning wood, so I think he might have crossed the line right here. I'm not sure, bud, but you win the race, and yeah. hey, um, but no, you'll have to look it up. I don't know what we're talking about. Well, hey, listen, but, but, I, let's just say it so they know they don't have to go do the work. 
he he well, got asked said, a question about which I'm so tired of this. It's like the dumbest question about whether or not you wear a jacket. A I see the setup in this from the beginning. As soon as Coop had planted that question with that guy to ask, then as soon as he <laughs> got him to ask it, he smirked like that was his boy. And he said, I expect a good answer. That was a pretty witty answer, Cooper, if that was off the top of your head. I think it was set up. If it was set up, it's not as cool as if it was off the top of your head. <laughs> well, he said sometimes you just got to jack it off, right? That was that was the response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a pretty, yeah. pretty coincidental opportunity. <laughs> uh, pretty uh, coincidental. Um, well, I. I oh, so but I, wait, let's not let it go. Chase Chase says in the press conference about his line in the, and I even fact check this to make sure I asked him so I don't sound stupid right now. He says I'm doing the KTM. Junior, oh no, he's saying I'm doing the KJSC line through the whole first rhythm section. I'm just double, double, double it. I'm like, what does that mean? He means he's doing the KTM Junior Supercross Challenge line, like the 50 line through the whole first section. I was dying. That's pretty funny. I like that. <laughs> that is actually pretty funny. That's good. Well, a lot yeah. like kind of what McAdoo did in yeah. that 250 class. I'm worried Chase is going to go back, is going to regret this one. Because if well, he would have just gotten a little more aggressive <clears throat> early with Ken Roxon, he could have absolutely run down Cooper Webb, I believe. Now, does he be even pass that him and said, beat him? He had the know. opportunity. He got all the way up there to him, and he had one line that Coop claims that he knew or he sensed, which was the on-off, and then Chase would go wide. And then he'd get like a, a good run through there. I don't know if that's how he – no, it's not how he got Kenny, but he could have if he wanted to be more aggressive. And he said his downfall was it set him up on the outside. But really, if he could get back to the inside, which he would have, it would have been like how when Jet passed Coop in the heat race. He would have positioned himself to the inside. The lap that he was closest, and I thought like, oh, here they come, here they come, because he's much faster in the whoops. There was a lapper, man, maybe three laps from the end, and the lapper went out in that line to get out of the way, and it really was like, I think that was his chance. If he could have got that right there, maybe he could have made a pass. But Chase gets an A for effort, I think. Hey, and I want to go back to something that uh, Jason was saying earlier, too. Like, Chase Sexton, 15 points down, like, he's still not out of this. No, by no means. Yeah. No, especially so, not given the way this season's going. I mean, you know, you give those top couple guys just a, a bad start, a crash. You, he goes on a roll like he did last year, and re- rattles off a few wins. I mean, he's right back in it. Yep. Hey, and one thing to note is that um, I don't know how Jet Lawrence felt about the race because you can't find any words from him on any of these guys post-race. How was your race? You know, I'm pretty sure he stormed the hell out of there. I think things oh, yeah. are kind of coming off the rails. Like, look, three weeks back, Cooper Webb is what? Almost a race down. Now we're right here. We still have like four races to go. At this rate, Coop's going to win the thing by 40 some points, bro. Like, you don't kill the main <laughs> character that way through the movie. Slow down. <laughs> hey, I, I got to admit, man, like last week when we did Sight Lab, I thought, I don't know. You guys were, you guys got a lot of faith in Cooper Webb. Like, Jets. Jeff's no, he's good, you know, like I, I don't think I felt like maybe you weren't giving Jed enough credit, but like maybe maybe the pressure is getting to him. I I, I don't hey, know. Let's give Jet credit because to have that start way back in the back, dude, the floor was there. Honestly, I was thinking, dude, this is where it could come off, you know, and he could throw it away right here, trying to be too good. He did a pretty damn good job. You know, whatever place he got, fourth, I believe. What did he get? He, he got fifth. He, he almost had Anderson right at the end. Well, I mean, and, and if he, and but if that he, one could have been, that could have been like a a 12th or something, you know? Like yeah. that was a good result for Cooper. If sure. Cooper would have had that start and done that same result, would have been great. You know what I mean? For any of them. Yeah. And that's like yeah. the stop the bleeding process, you know? Jets about ready for maybe a win here or to get back up there. Hey, Wait, how the, about how, Tomac start? Wait, that's almost. Are these guys putting glue on their tires? Did you see Eli Tomac's <laughs> race start? What yeah, was yeah. that? It was insane. Whoa. Yeah. That was weird. Yeah. 
Yeah. What were you going to say, Bruce? Um, I was going to say, um, oh, just how, how much more exciting that makes this whole deal though, them being tied, like, like had jet gotten past Jason Anderson, you know, like he would have still been leading, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like two, two point lead. I mean, yeah, but it's like, yeah, but, but still like how much more better does this just make this series? Now they're tied. Now they're better. It makes it a lot more better. For sure. hey, well, they showed... <laughs> Sorry, Jake. Jet, I'm working on Jet my grade. showed us that he's not scared of Hombre right. the way he passed him in the heat yeah. race. He's not riding Hombre different. You know what I mean? And the only reason yeah. he didn't blow him off the track or try to in that last turn was because of the ruts, dude. This wasn't a you know a courteous type thing. So yeah. I thought it was weird that Hombre, when had the opportunity in the heat race two turns later. Maybe it was because of the ruts, but he he didn't hit Jet when he looked like he wanted to run it in on him. And then yeah. Eli in the main event, Eli, they even played a replay of it. It was such an egregious offense right here that Eli clearly was set up to go in on Jet and make like a good pass. And he just backed out of it and dang there stopped in the middle of the track. So I think that answers how these guys are going to ride him. You know, like. Jet don't seem like he's really going to have any problems from the teammate or from the past rival, like I was predicting last weekend. You know, yeah, yeah. he's. I think Justin he. Someone got in his ear, probably Johnny O, and said, "Hey, don't make enemies out there. You're going to make it harder on yourself for the next, ten, you know, eight years. Like just race these guys clean. You're fast enough to pass them. Heads up. So just do that. You know. But um, in his situation last night, I feel like. You just some if you're coming through, you got to get by him. If that means hit him, that means hit him. Um, Jet may want to consider if he's in a position to like throw his overall heat race time if he's going to win, so he gets a second gate pick, so he can get like couple away from Coop because I think he's like angry and he's starting to mess with the dude in the heat race. He was revving the balls off his bike on the last yeah. lap after he went by. And it was like Coop says in the press conference, he says, yeah, Jet got me when I made that mistake, but I wasn't worried. I felt good about it. And I was like, dang, yeah, he's confident. Yeah. 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 This is not the time to have Cooper Webb tied win points with you. You know what I mean? Like, but it sets up a really cool last four or five rounds or whatever. We got four left. Yeah. Because you got this old freaking wily veteran who's just gritty and man, he's just so damn gritty and tough at the end of these championships and end of races. And then Jet, the new, you know, I mean, he's going to be a multi-time champion. There's just, it's coming, right? Like he's the next big guy, but we're still in that zone where like Coop still Cooper can get it done. Cooper Webb's big guy. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. So, so he's then, like, dude, push me off my chair. I'm not getting off. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great for us. Um, Let's run through the rest of them here. Roxon with a third, a good ride from him. Um, like I said, I I wanted Sexton to go up and have a shot at Coop, so I was getting pissed off that he was playing too nice with him. But it was a good ride from Ken. A uh, good ride for Anderson, for that matter, in fourth. Um, we haven't really seen much from him lately, and that was probably yeah, one yeah, of the better he rides he's had. Good. Yeah. Jet yeah. fifth, uh, Eli sixth. Man, after what I saw in the heat, I thought, okay, Maybe Eli can get this done. That was a guy I picked to win this main and just, I don't know well, what's happening where he can't get it rolling. But he's feeling himself. He came into this thing hot, like this race. Let's look back on him. He won what that last one. And then he comes in here and in practice, he didn't have the fastest lap time, but I watched the practice and it was like time narrowing down. He was in second. Which actually, let me back up. Coop has the fastest time and Jet unlocks that triple triple before the finish mid second practice. Comes across the finish line and he gets the top time and he celebrated. I thought it was weird. He did like a yeah, like he was visibly like, yes. Dude, what, I got what, him. what 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 did? You know. Yeah. No, this is Jet. And then oh, later Jet in that did. session, Webb goes and beats him off, beats his time. But beats Jet him off at during that- <laughs> Yeah, what am I? <laughs> Hey, surely we can edit that out, bud. Oh, we're leaving <laughs> that one. Time out. 
Hey, no, I need a ball ping, game. We're that way. Dang. No, no, P- Ping's <laughs> Ping's gonna always uh, make sure our vocabulary is perfect. Bandwidth. That was low <laughs> bandwidth. Oh, well, anyway, he goes and he beats him and gets the top time. And uh, I thought that was kind of ironic. Like Jet, dang, he got that time, and he was like, "Hey, I got this in a bag. I think that might be a little." sign of like the championship thing too i felt like maybe he thought he had it in the bag a little bit too soon hmm. but i don't know coop was kind of telling him like the party's over i asked coop this week how he feels and uh, <laughs> i wish he would have answered me before we had the site lap and i would have been more confident but i was voting for him without hearing this but yeah he told me dude he feels great he feels great about the weekend i was like oh <laughs> man he's gonna be fired <laughs> But what I was going to say about Eli is, dude, at the end of that practice, even though Coop ends up with the fastest time, Eli jumped across the first turn. You never saw this the whole rest of the night because nobody even did it. And, like, they had his time on there. He did this whole new line, like, unlocked a new line. He took a left, and he went for the triple-triple, and he only did the first one. Mm. And then it was was Colton Nichols in front of him. So Eli, like, comes to the last turn comes across the finish line and he's I'm like come on go beast one more lap because practice was exciting <laughs> and yeah. he comes across the finish line and he he's not doing a fast lap takes a turn and then he saw the time and he tried to like pin it like and he was visibly frustrated like he knew he had what it took because dude he would have got the fastest lap time he had a whole new line plus all the other lines and I I think that kind of like not really threw him off, but other than that, bro, he was running perfect, you know? And if he would have got the fastest time, won the last main event, and then won that heat race with that miraculous start, he would have been going into the main event feeling like you can't mess with me, you know? So, I don't know. Yep. So, what did happen, though? Like, I mean, in your opinion, how, why can't – He fell why down. He... Oh, did he have a fall? Yeah, he fell yeah. down in the turn after the so, uh, finish line, I believe. Yeah. Oh. Oh, shoot. It's kind I of funny that. because in the heat race, he gets the checkered flag, and it's yeah. almost like he practices falling in that turn. After the checker, like, he almost falls. And then in the main, he goes in there, and then he really did the fall. I was like, oh, oh dang. crap. All right. Well, yeah. that explains that. I missed that in the broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. He um, did, like, a little slide out. Dang it. Uh, good ride for Hunter in seventh. Again, like, I know he's been kind of quiet, but this dude is a guy that has to kind of get the reps in and build confidence slowly. And I think he's doing it. He's doing a good job. Justin Cooper eighth, which was a great recovery after his crash. Um, and you have another question about that. I want to get to you. I want to mention Justin Hill and ninth though. Hell of a ride for Hill six, yeah, pretty much 10. the whole main. And then, you know, yeah. still hang on to that. That's great. Yeah. That was. So tell me your question good. about, you had another question about Cooper kind of in, in this whole, uh, in Justin practice. Cooper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He jumped yeah, yeah. and had a crash where he got lucky. He landed right on the edge of the track. Another couple feet, he's on the cement. And you were like, man, you know, we put nets up around the turns. You know, when we see an issue repeating itself, we try to fix it. We, I say we, I mean like the sport in general. Yeah. No, it's after, you, Ping. You, Ping. You're, you're uh... Yeah, no, they, they don't listen to me at all for sure. <laughs> uh, but like Forkner's crash, you know, you can go back to uh, Cooper Webb went off onto the concrete a couple of years ago, bad. And now this, like, do we need to start thinking about, and, and, and here's my question, because like having done a little bit of supermoto, I know when you, when you land on asphalt or cement, you slide and it actually, it's a lot easier than landing on dirt. Cause in dirt, you kind of stop real quick and it'll, that's what'll break bones or tear ligaments. When you actually land on something like asphalt or concrete, you slide and dissipate that energy. Now, the initial hit isn't good, but it's not good on dirt either. It's not like it's cushioned. So I think the concrete in your head sounds real bad and it looks bad, but, man, I mean, look at Fortner. He's already back on a bike. He's, he's tr- he wants to come back and race the last couple of supercrosses. They're trying to, like, pump his brakes and have him wait for nationals, but, like, he's already back. So yeah, look at Thrasher. He's already back. He landed on dirt. Look at Cooper. He raced the main event. And he landed on mud. I mean, I don't know. I don't like the cement at all. I think when you land on the cement, then yeah, you slide like Forkner. But I think isn't that a similar thing that that was Doug Henry's injury in a supermoto? Didn't he slide into a wall? He slid and it hit a um, wall. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think if 
I just don't think there should be. I think maybe it's some kind of just piled dirt up or I really don't know the solution, dude, but I'm down to complain about it until something <laughs> happens. <you know? laughs> <laughs> I like to complain. I mean, we talked about could they take some sand and lay some sand around that edge or mulch like wood chips? Um, I don't know. I, I, I hear you. It definitely is ugly when you see a guy land on concrete, even if his even if it isn't worse or better, it just it seems worse, you know. Like really, like, you how, about, this dude? Like, how about the mechanics tough blocks that block the mechanics, like something like that? Yeah, that, or some like rubber. wedges up against the thing. Yeah, or like rubber mulch. I, don't know. I mean, Matty yeah. Burke can hit the wall in Arena Cross, and then they came up with that blow up mat or the blow up padding for the walls in Arena Cross. Oh, you know, like, yeah, it's a good one. Like that. I will write a strongly worded letter to the AMA and see what happens, but uh, I wouldn't hold your breath on anything happening. Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is ugly, dude. I, I, it, I definitely hear what you're saying. Um, so, all right, let's talk championship here. With the four rounds left, you guys obviously both still on board with Webb. 100%. Do you think we see Jet just, like, meltdown? Or, or how do you see it playing out? I, I see it kind of happening like how this how this race was, where like he's still the fastest guy out there. He is. Like he's he's one of the fastest dudes out there, but I just feel like these races, he's not gonna be able to kind of put them together with, you know, um I don't know. I just I think he's he's I don't I don't know, Ping. I uh I think um I think Webb's going to get creative here and kind of start playing these mind games to where he's going to be putting himself in these wrong positions, you know, if it's a fifth or fourth, and um, you're going to just see Cooper Webb starting to really walk away with this thing. Yeah, he's already doing it, dude. And I mean, I we're going to have to find meltdown because – this is kind of is a meltdown. Like, yeah, Jeff, like, in this sense, I don't see it getting much worse than it's been the past three weeks. Like, it, like and, I'm, and I'm trying I think to find he's recover. I think he's yeah. going to start doing better. Yeah, yeah. make a close championship. I think the meltdown is going to be looked as what has already happened. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. Like, like I'm trying to find a better way to like explain it, but like straight up, I just think Cooper Webb's going to start getting on this this role of just winning and i think jet's just gonna struggle from that i do jet on the edge more than we realize dude the more that i watch it closer like he's yeah rushing tough blocks and he's dude he's not doing this as easy as we think he's doing it dude no you know and, it's it's hard for him and, like, and, Je- and, not and, a and for those that you know didn't listen to the if you didn't listen to the side lap like what jason was saying too like he's nervous for sure. Yeah. And, and, and Cooper Webb knows he's nervous right now. Yeah. He knows the position that he's in. And, um, you know, I, I feel like, I almost feel like Webb's just sent back, like, dude, this is going to be fun now. You know, I, I'm going to, it'll but be like, really interesting to listen and watch closely, like the little moments when they're down on the line together or out in practice or the press conference and see if Stu- Coop starts playing the mind games because now's the time now it's it's tied up you've erased a huge points lead i think i think the mind games are played like even the way that you see the way he handled that heat race start when webb came across the front of him like didn't do nothing dirty but i mean that kind of sent a message like jet almost landed on his head right there and he realized like mm. oh dang next time i'm coming into the first turn with coop i'm not i'm backing off that's what he just learned right there you know like lesson and i there's that triple triple before the finish line you probably think like why don't Webb jump that why can't he jump that dude he jumped it in practice he knew yeah. like hey that's sketchy but i'm not gonna do that i probably don't have to is what he said that yeah. has to kill you in your jet because dude you watch that race back without that line you ain't got shit i i don't mean that let me reverse without that line cooper was pulling away from you a half a second every lap and that line would suck him back up there and maybe he is thinking well how huh, coop can't do that because that's a tech line but then to hear him say hey dude i didn't want to do that that's got to make him think like oh dang you know like so he could yeah. do that if he had yeah. pretty crazy 
Uh, and look, it's it's old age and treachery versus youthful exuberance, as they used to say. And that's what we got. And um, I don't care who you pick. This is going to be fun to watch. And um, you got this incredible talent with this versus this really seasoned, really sharp, really crafty dude. And uh, I'm here for it. It's going to be awesome. I, I don't I honestly don't have a pick. I would what I want to see. Come on. I want to see Sexton win the next two. And get his ass up into this fight and make it a three-way battle in Salt Lake City. That's what I that want. Would be, that would be cool. Championship, I'll go all, all veteran. I'll go Hampshire, McAdoo, and then Webb. <laughs> yep. No yep. two all guns right. here. All right. Yep. All right. I like it. All right, guys. Well, um, I want to thank our sponsors for for supporting this. I love this show, man. We get to break down what we saw. And, and dude, J Law, thanks again for the man. You got you, you're a student of this. J- stuff. J Law is the best. J Law is the best. <laughs> so I really appreciate yeah. it, man. Big thank you to Rock and Turf. Check those guys out if you want to get a really cool mat. Uh, Mac Maxis.com. If you guys need truck or mountain bike tires, hit them up. And speedstrap.com. Tie downs, uh, pull uh like toe straps, all kinds of cool crap from those guys. We appreciate it. Um, all right, dude. Well, we got we got a good one next weekend. So uh let's drag you back onto this thing here before the season ends, because I want to hear your I want to hear you take after like Nashville. I got the inside scoops too. Until these riders find out that I'm messing with the media, they'll still talk to me. So I guess. <laughs> right on. Hey, you. Jay, well, Jay, a lot, man. Yeah. What were so, you going to say, Bruce? Right. No, I said that. I don't know. Jet Lawrence might need to be uh, giving uh, J Law here a call for some advice here. If it comes down to. You better to read my DM. <laughs> all right jet slide into j-law's dm for the tickets all right yeah, i yeah. need a donor sponsor <laughs> right on all right thanks boys we appreciate you guys listening uh we'll see you guys later on this week for site lab so long if you like this video please be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos comment what you thought and share it with your friends